Hello and welcome. Today I'm in the tier 9 French cruiser, the Saint Louis. And at the end of the video I'll show you the commander skills and upgrades I use on the ship and I'll tell you why. So, in this match, as you can see, it's a tier 9 match, which means that I am top tier. But most of the match is filled with tier 9 and tier 8 ships, so... You know, I can't exactly go around um, using my power to... Uh, defeat tier 7 enemies with ease. Now, as you can notice, uh, I spawned to the side of my team and I started heading towards the sea cap on this mountain rage map. And I am alone, that is, there are no allies with me. And I realized this while playing and, you know, I do this on purpose. So the idea is that I will go towards the sea cap and perhaps try to take it, you know, if there's only some enemies I can easily beat or nobody, it should be an easy cap. Meanwhile, my team is, you know, doing stuff elsewhere. If I can't take it, however, then I'll try to run away as much as I can and, you know, try to pull aggro plus deal some damage to the opposing team. However, unfortunately, um, considering that the Friedrich is heading in this direction and the Donskoy appeared there, you know, Chances that I'm gonna be able to take this capstone are pretty small. I'll still try for a bit though. And uh, it's getting worse and worse now. The Ognawa is heading in this direction. And apparently even a misery. Now I'm not gonna fire because I want to use my concealment as much as possible. Basically I'll try to sit behind this island here in front of me. And maybe I'll be able to take it. And then I will run away. If I can't take it. You know, I'll just try running away before that. By the way, I haven't used speed boost. Uh, that's mostly because I didn't really think it would be worth it. Oh, and there's a Charles Martel here as well. <sighs> Bad news, I suppose. Also, I don't think I realized at the time that I was only doing a half turn. I'm still capping. But once I start running, I'm going to use speed boost. Because if you use speed boost, your acceleration is much, much faster. And since, unfortunately, I didn't stop in time, I guess I'm gonna be spotted here, so I won't be getting this caps on. And I'll just start running away. Maximum acceleration, speed boost, and I am going to try shooting these opponents as much as I can while running away. Now, I think I am gonna take a lot of damage while doing so, but I'll still try my best. The torpedoes are just in case, maybe I'll get lucky and hit either the Charles or the Donskoy. Not that it's still okay, it might just, you know, buy me a little bit of time by uh, pulling the attention of the shawls over there, and maybe she can't shoot me as much. I mean, if it delays even a few seconds, then it's worth it, right? It's not like these torpedoes cost anything. Oh, wow! I actually hit the torpedo on the shawls. That's good news. And she's showing me a broadside now. That's even better news because I might be able to citadel her. If I get lucky, that is. But yeah, there's what, three, five ships in this direction more or less, so yeah, I guess I do have to run. Unfortunately, there is a friendly Iowa coming in this direction. Mm, I don't think that's a good idea by the Iowa, but you know, I can't really control her. There's also one other thing there's a cyclone ticking down in 2 minutes 30 seconds, however. Even though it says 2 minutes 30 seconds until the cyclone hits, it still takes, I think, like a minute and 30 seconds until the cyclone is actually active. I think the maximum cyclone is in effect at 11 minutes to go. I think that should be in, like, every match. Which means that um, there's still a good 4 minutes to go, and I should not try to rely on it yet. So, I'm running away. Still drawing some aggro, still shooting some opponents. And that's basically what I will try to do. Hopefully I'll pull even more aggro off of them. And as you can see on the rest of the map, uh, our team has kept the B cap and the A cap. And we're doing... Actually, no, we're not doing that great. We're actually behind. However, as you can see, the enemy team on the left side of the map has... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six ships. While our team has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ships. Plus, there might be an Iowa going in and helping. So, you know, 
We should hold a significant advantage in number of players, so we should be able to win the fight over there. Because, you know, there's just me and the Iowa keeping four or five ships busy on this side of the map. And you know, it's not like we're not dealing any damage while we're keeping them busy. Now, finding our shells at this kind of range is a really annoying thing, just as finding a St. Louis at this kind of range is annoying because she... they maneuver decently and they have a lot of speed which makes it quite difficult to actually finish them off unless you, you know, get lucky. Which is possible because we're dealing with cruisers after all. It would be nice if we could finish that Charles off, because, you know, she's low HP. Well, lower than the rest of them, I suppose. I think I need to lead a little bit more on that one. Okay, I fired. That is very useful. Now, I have to pay a little bit of attention to where I am. I need to show more broadside to them. Not because I want to show broadside to them, but rather because I'm getting closer and closer to the blue line. Actually, I think it's grey, and it has been grey for quite many moons by this point. But yeah, basically I don't want to run into the map edge, and uh, I want to try to get as far away as I can. You see, if, if I hit the map edge, and then I won't be able to run further away from them, and it will be harder for me to try to angle away if they shoot at me. So, basic, basically, when you're running away from some... Actually, no. You don't want to ever show a flat broadside towards an enemy. You want to either be slightly angled away or slightly angled towards them. Either or, because in that case it's easier for you to angle slightly more so that your armor can bounce and that your armor, you know, is just harder to penetrate. So, right now, I'm slightly angling away from them. Because, you know... I'm moving away. Once I get very very close to the blue line, or even if I hit it, I'll angle. I'll start angling the other way. Now, Cyclone is in effect, but it's still at 25 kilometers and there's still a good 50 seconds to go on that. Now I could sit it out on this uh, grey line here, but I think it's okay for me to show slightly more broadside and just, you know, angle towards them because in like 30 seconds It'll only be 8 kilometers detection, so the battleships are unlikely to be able to kill me. At least not quickly. So now I'm angling towards them, slightly. Still spotted, 17 kilometers. There's like a good 15 seconds to go. And I'm unspotted because Cyclone is 12 kilometers, so now it doesn't matter which way I angle. Because, you know... They can't see me, or target me, or shoot me. Now we are taking the B-cap back, and... Um, oh yeah, by the way, we did finish the shells off, if you didn't notice. The Iowa should be more or less fine too. And they have Adonskoy, Misery, and Friedrich on the side of the map. Which is actually only three ships. They are likely heading towards the B-cap, they will fight that Terpitz. Yeah, there is the Misery. And... By the way, if you're wondering, I'm looking at the minimap right now because that's the only thing that you can see that matters, right? My speed boost is up again, so I'm gonna start heading closer to the enemies because, um, well, if I can get a fight, that, that, that will be slightly useful. And if I can't, basically I will have snuck by them and I will try to take the sea cap yet again. So, both of the battleships are accounted for. They are near the B cap. Which means that if I run into anything, it'll be the Donskoy, which I think I should be able to take. That's also, what, by the way, why I loaded AP. Because the moment I see her, maybe she is showing me broadside and I'll be able to get a nice hit on her. Now, I don't think our Terpitz is going to be able to take the B-cap. However, because both of the battleships are away, I do think my chances of being able to sneak into the C-cap are going to be high. Mostly because... Once the Misery and the Frid... Okay, there's the Donskoy, so I'm not gonna be fighting a Donskoy either. So, once the Misery and the Friedrich end up fighting the Terpets, they will eventually kill the Terpets, but I think that they will be... They will continue heading in the direction of my teammates. 
Meanwhile, I will be sailing to the sea cap. And, you know, they will be sailing away from the sea cap, so they will be unable to react in time to me taking the sea cap. At least, that's what I hope. Now, it is a bit unfortunate, because we are losing in terms of ships. As you can see, we're down to five ships. I have three cruisers, two battleships. They still have three cruisers, three battleships, and one destroyer. So we are definitely not in a very good position, numbers-wise. Even though... The enemy team pulled quite a few ships onto the sea cap, and we pulled a lot less ships. Yet our team that should have held a numerical advantage on the A cap lost. But you know, things like this happen. By the way, the Misery is actually heading in my direction right now. But I feel that she's probably gonna head in the direction of either the Rune or maybe the Iowa. And yes, if you're wondering... If I'm doing it on purpose, yes, I am pronouncing... Or yes, I am calling the Missouri Misery on purpose. Because that is what she does to her enemies, isn't it? The worst battleship to fight as a destroyer is a Missouri. Okay. I've literally been sailing just in a straight line, basically, for like the last two, three minutes. I feel like I might have... If I were to redo this match, I feel like I should, at least with the knowledge I have right now, I feel like I should have started turning towards the two battleships plus the Donskoy slightly earlier so that I wouldn't have quite got, got quite as far away, so I should have been able to get to the sea cap slightly faster. They are, the enemy team is trying to contest the A cap, but I feel like my team should win that one. And there's the sea cap. I wonder where the Donskoy is, and where the Ognamoy is. We haven't seen the Ognamoy for quite a while. Her last known location hasn't changed for a long time. Oh, our Iowa actually managed to take out that Missouri. Good. And the Rune managed to take out the Terpets that was contesting the A-Cap. So, I'm gonna be heading towards the B-Cap now. Right now I'm obviously gonna slow down and wait until I actually finish capping so I don't accidentally sail out of it. But once I'm done with that I will be heading straight for the B-cap because as you can see the enemy Friedrich is sailing away from the B-cap and I imagine that the Donskoy is doing the same thing but I think the Donskoy is heading slightly towards the north to meet up with the Ibuki and the Neptune. At least that's my guess because we haven't seen her so no. She must have gone in some different direction. Also, we saw smoke ahead there, so that was either the Neptune or the Ognoi. And considering we know where the Neptune is, that might have been the Ognoi. Also, we know where the Ognoi is now, so, you know, it doesn't really matter. Oh, and there's the Donskoy. As you see, she did go north, right? Like I expected. And since the Friedrich is sailing away from the Big Cap, I should be able to easily take this. You know, capping is just, um, really, really, really useful. And really nice too. I do recommend it. Because, you know, capping wins games. However, of course, if you lose all of your ships, that's slightly detrimental to winning the match. You know, we only have three ships left. Two cruisers, one battleship. They have one battleship, three cruisers, and one destroyer. I definitely like the chances of my opposing team slightly more. Especially since, as, you, as we can see, our Iowa is at 21k HP only. So, that's not good news, I suppose. Oh yeah, somebody was detonated. Too bad for said detonating ship. Now, I expect that one of the enemies is going to come back from this northern direction from the ACAP. Because, you know, we're taking the big cap. But if not, that's okay, because uh, I don't really want to fight the Friedrich, because I don't know how much HP she has, and I think it would be throwing my ship away. I think I'll be much better served trying to fight one of the cruisers. And as we can see, one of the ships is coming back through the northern side, and it was the Ognoi for a slight moment. Unfortunately, the Iowa decided that no, she was going to take it. Take her. However, the Donskoy is heading back through the southern side. And I'm gonna compliment Yayo since I have nothing to do. So, 
The Donskoy is coming back from the southern side here, you know, from the direction I'm pointing my guns at, and I will, you know, use my AP on her to try to get some citadels. I'm also going to uh, launch some torpedoes, maybe the citadels won't appear, as they just didn't. And maybe the torpedoes will do some work. And there's a Neptune next to the Donskoy tomb. I angle away, and right now my guess was that the Ibuki was not coming back from the northern side, and she wasn't. So I don't need to be worried about uh, somebody citadeling me from the side. I keep sailing away in a more or less straight line because I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to turn my ship enough so that my front guns are there because I'm afraid I might get citadeled by the Neptune or something. And I'm gonna use my front guns on the Neptune. Because the Neptune can finish me off really really quickly if I don't pay attention. But you know the same can happen to her if she shows me broadside like she is right now. Speed boost is really really nice at avoiding shells, isn't it? And now let's finish off the Donskoy, and then there's only the Ibuki and the Friedrich left. Oh, double strike. Mm. That's very very good. And there's the Ibuki, still showing me broadside, so... That's something that I can deal with. And our shells finished off the Friedrich, by the way, at some point. The enemy team managed to take out our Iowa. But you know, it's only one Ibuki left. I guess I should start switching to Ichi. By the way, the way I was moving, I was um, basically pulling the Ibuki somewhat away from the B cap. She will either have to uh, show me broadside or uh, sail out of the cap zone now. Or you know, maybe she stands still, but I guess that's not. That's not quite the greatest idea either. So even if I were to die through some accident, I think my Charles should be able to win the match. Especially since it's only two minutes left and, you know, we have like 200 points in them. You know, capping kind of helps win games. Now, the biggest worry is that the Ibuki might torpedo me at some point once she shows me more broadside. She avoided my torpedoes. Um, I don't remember which side. Yeah, I think those were the left side torpedoes, and since I'm gonna be, you know, I can torpedo her again. That's basically what I meant. So even if she torpedoes me now, she's completely dead. And goodbye, Ibuki. Very nice game, wasn't it? He who runs away lives to fight another day. Basically, that was my strategy, right? I went to sea, I pulled some aggro, I ran away. And I came back to fight again. 15,800 experience, a double strike, a dreadnought, 118k damage, 8 citadel hits, 1 solo cap, 1 assisted capture. Unfortunately, it wasn't a kraken, but you know, close enough, 4, ki four ships sunk. 2640 base XP with Charles being number 2. But I overdid well, but he actually got a surprisingly low amount of XP for all of that. Obviously, I need to compliment this Charles because, you know, she was instrumental in winning this match as well by taking care of the Friedrich der Grosse. And here's the really interesting part. Notice how my 118,000 damage was dealt to almost exclusively cruisers. I only did 1,848 damage to something other than cruisers. And all the cruisers I dealt damage to, I sunk as well. This includes all of the ships that came to the uh, sea cap and then ran after me, etc. Oh, and this match put me at 19 points. How nice. So, let's take a look at the uh, consumables first. Obviously, I use all premium consumables and speed boost. And I mostly use hydroacoustic search. You could use defensive fire, however, I found that the anti-air of the St. Louis is more or less good enough. I mean, it, she has 104 AA DPS at 7.2 kilometers, like 154 at uh, 5.1 kilometers, and like 90 at 2.9. So I find that combined with speed boost, it's more or less enough. The reason I like Hydra is that if a destroyer, opposing destroyer, of course, gets slightly too close, I can always 
new speed boost to try to hunt it down. And it's a lot safer if I have Hydra available so I don't get ambushed by the torpedoes. So, upgrades. Uh, I go main RNS modification 1 because I don't want my main batteries to be broken pretty much ever. Neither do I want my torpedoes to be broken. In the second slot, I go with speed boost or engine boost modification 1 because this increases the um, act action time of the engine boost, which actually puts engine boost duration at 270 seconds with a reload time of 90 seconds, and you actually have four of them. And if you do the maths, uh, 300 and... or I guess you don't do it that way. If you do the maths, you can pretty much run speed boost during the entire game. In the... Uh, Third slot, I go for the AA guns modification one because you want your AA range and the other ones in this slot aren't that great. Now the turret traverse thing would always be a nice nice addition, however it increases loading time so you don't want lower DPM. Secondaries and dispersion aren't as important on a cruiser. In the first defensive slot, actually, yeah I guess they are. No, actually they're in cost. In the fourth slot you go for rudder shift because uh, due to your really fast speed with speed boost and because it's always active you want to be able to maneuver a lot. In fact, I, I'm i actually unsure if you want to have concealment in the fifth slot or maybe you would want to have steering gears in this slot because this would put your rudder shift at something like four or three, three to five seconds or something around that which makes you really really difficult to hit if you don't want to get hit. However, the concealment on the ship in my opinion is good enough, so I think concealment expertise or concealment system modification 1 is also good, which is what I went with. And in the last slot I go for uh, reduced reload so that you can deal more damage output. Now you could also go the range upgrade, however I find that the 18.3km uh, on the St. Louis is quite enough and you don't really need it. Now, as far as the commander is concerned, I go with these skills. First of all I went priority target, then I went uh, expert marksman, superintendent and concealment expert. After that it's basically up to you. Personally I went with advanced firing training for the anti-air guns. And also, um, well actually no it is the anti-air guns pretty much, yeah. Uh, then I went Demolition Expert and Adrenaline Rush. No, you could go something else as well. For instance, you could go Vigilance, which would do something. Uh, you could also go something like Jack of All Trades, but mostly I don't really recommend many of the other things for this cruiser. Now. There is one thing you might want to go. You might want to go IFHE, but I don't really recommend it that much. I think it's... I don't think it's that good. At least not for the St. Louis. Maybe if you use the same captain in the same configuration on the Henry, but, you know, that's kind of up to you. Although I, I'm not sure if I would even recommend it on the Henry. Oh yeah, I hit some codes in this video. Uh, they are the Wargaming codes that Wargaming generously provided that you can redeem for in the shop for uh, a Santa Christmas box. Now, first come, first serve, there's only one. You can only use the code once, and if you have got all three types of boxes from other contributors, then you can't use anymore. So you, there's one large, medium, and small. Um, they should work for all regions, and let me know in the comments if you used one of the codes. So, yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.